Now, hey developers, today I'm gonna to show you all about the Amplify library. We're gonna look at creating an authenticated flow using Amplify, which is part of AWS. And then we're also gonna look at the new app sync and look at GraphQL. So this is gonna be a big overview. We're gonna do some coding, so make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of Vue.js, React, Angular, and this channel is all about teaching you guys things. So I did a Amplify video, I don't know, about six months ago where I went over the Amplify framework, but it was a long time ago. Some things have changed. I thought I'd go ahead and look at it again. It actually just came back from the AWS reInvent conference. So I thought it's all fresh in my head, so I'll show you guys. So you can see if you go to aws.amplify.github.io, you can kind of read all about this. And what it does is it gives you all the tools that you need to use the AWS services, the Amazon Web Services, inside your front end app really easily. So if you go to get started, and by the way, it's not just front end, it's also for your iOS apps, it's for your Android apps, it's kind of everything, uh, all of the above. So of course, the first thing you need to do is install the CLI. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So if we just follow the instructions, I actually have Visual Studio Code open here, I have an empty project, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, copy over here. And then this will go ahead and install the CLI. And if you don't have Node, I would just go to uh, go to the Node website and download the latest version of Node. I think I'm using version 10 and it's fine. So we'll just give this a second. Okay, so it went ahead and installed. And one thing I also like to install is if you go to the extensions here, there's this AWS Amplify API. It just adds some nice snippets. So when you're working with AWS Amplify in your projects that you don't have to remember at all. So uh, I, would I would recommend installing this extension as well. Okay, so since we have this extension installed, uh, we actually are ready to configure it and do a few other things, but we wanna create a project first. So since we, in this channel, I really like Vue, I'll go ahead and create a Vue project. Now I have, if I go view version, I'm using 4.1.1, the CLI. So to install a view, you do npm install tac g at view CLI, and that'll install the latest version. And then once you have that installed, you can do view create, and then the name of the app. So I'm gonna call it AWS YouTube. And it's gonna ask me a couple of questions. I'm just gonna hit enter through most of them. So it'll just take a second. And I'm gonna do manually select features. I'm gonna do router. I'm not going to use any Vuex on this or TypeScript. I'm going to use Prettier, Lint on save, dedicated files. No, I'm not going to save it. Cool. So this will just take a minute and it'll create our app for us. Okay, great. It's installed now. So you can see here I can change directory AWS YouTube, run npm serve, and I'll do that. I'll change directory to it. But before I run serve the app I just created, I want to show you guys something. If you go and look up AWS free tier, so if you are kind of afraid of jumping into the Amazon world and you don't want to spend a bunch of money and you're a developer, just go to the AWS free tier. It's It gives you like a ton of free, it, it gives you basically 12 months for free. You can get like EC2 instances, which is like their virtual machines. You can get their S3 buckets where you can store data. You can get their relational databases you can get the DynamoDB up to 25 gigs. So you get all this pretty much for free with their free tier for 12 months. So I would highly recommend anybody that's watching this video, sign up for this free tier through AWS and just learn this. People are hiring developers that know AWS. It's a great skill to know. And it might actually pique your interest. Maybe you'll find out that DevOps in the backend server world is more interesting than becoming a front-end developer. And if you are a front-end developer, it's good to know how you do to use this, maybe for your personal projects or for future jobs. I mean, also I would say that I believe there's a Google uh, GCP, the Google Cloud Platform also has a free tier, I believe, maybe Azure does too. So, you know, look at these options. But today we're talking about AWS. Cool, so uh, before we get too far, let's do, um, let's, let's still install a couple of other libraries. Let's get some of the boring library and stuff installed. So there is a AWS Amplify library for Vue. Um, so to, to get that installed, we need to do AWS Amplify-Vue. So that'll just take a second. 
and we need to install it locally, the AWS Amplify library locally. So I do npm i AWS Amplify. So that'll install the AWS Amplify library locally too. All right, so that's installed too. Now we need to use this Amplify command. So we have this global Amplify. If we do dash dash help, you can see it kind of gives you a scanning for plugins. It tells you everything with Amplify that, that it does. You can't see very well on this screen. It's kind of word wrapping, but it tells you have analytics, API, auth, function, hosting, interactions, notifications, storage, and they're adding stuff to this all the time. And it's it's pretty it's pretty active development on this on this library and this plugin here. So we first we need to do is amplify init. And so what this is going to do is going to kind of just set up our project for us. So enter name your project. I'm just call this AWS YouTube. Enter name for your environment. I don't know, I'm going to call it YouTube. You can call that dev or prod. I mean, you can get set up different environments too, but I'm just going to call it YouTube. I use Visual Studio Code as my editor. So you can see here, you can use this for your mobile apps. It also supports React Native, Native as well. So let's just do JavaScript. And yeah, see React Natives right here. So we're going to use View. And we know its source is the directory that our normal path is. Dist is the correct distribution and this can be npm run build and the start command is npm run serve it's actually creating in the background some cloud formation scripts that we're going to use um, that it uses to, to connect to, to aws and do everything that we need um, so i've heard in the in the past if you're kind of thinking well you know that's doing all these things i don't know what it's doing you can kind of take a, a approach where if you set up a new project with AWS Amplify, let it do everything it needs to do. It'll create the project, but later on you could start taking pieces of that out because there's a big config folder that it creates. And you can start putting that into your own DevOps world, creating your own scripts, your own cloud formation scripts or whatever you use um, for for that. But uh, you know, for this demo and for what we're doing here, we're just going to let it do its thing. Do you want to use an AWS profile? So I'm just going to use the default one. And cool. So now what it's doing now is adding back in environment YouTube. So it's initializing everything in the back end. It's adding a bunch of IAM rules, which is a way that Amazon handles permissions between different things. So like it's saying basically right here that we are able, our authentication will be able to talk to our GraphQL endpoint that'll be able to talk to any lambdas. So it creates all these IAM rules for you um, to facilitate the talking between different services. So this will just take a moment. Okay, great. It went ahead and finished. So you can see here that it says Amplify status. It gives you kind of some next steps. It said it completed successfully and uh, your project's been successfully initialized and connected to the cloud. Cool. So now we should be able to, to use them. By the way, if you're trying this at home and you didn't get that message to add everything, you might have to log into your AWS console first, or it may ask you, prompt you to log into your console before you can continue on with the CLI. So now we have everything in net, we can do amplify status. And this is going to tell us what we've added to our project so far. So you can see here, our environment is called YouTube. Like I said, you can call it dev, QA, whatever. And then inside here, we would see any of the services that we added through the AWS CLI. And we haven't added anything yet. So let's see if we can add something. Well, first, let's see if we if our project still runs. If we do npm run serve, that'll start up a local server on port 8080. Okay, there it is. So localhost 8080. Cool. So we got our basic generic view app running. But let's add... A service now I want to show you guys quickly a little bit of GraphQL so I'm not going to get into too much of it but we're going to at least see if we can look at it inside the console and then list things out of it and then maybe in the future videos if you guys like leave a comment below with if you want to see more of it and I will do a video where we do some mutations and some other things with GraphQL using the AWS app sync so the easiest way to do this we do amplify add API and it's going to you ask us right here, do you want GraphQL arrest? So we do want GraphQL. It's going to ask us for a name. We're just going to call AWS YouTube. 
Um, it looks like that might already be, um, doesn't like the dash there. So I'm gonna do AWS YouTube, uh, Eric, I don't know. And this time it's, it's asking us choosing the default authorization type for the API. So, uh, if we choose API key, then it requires some sort of API key when we're calling the, the backend service, or we can do something like Amazon Cognito user pool. Now I'm going to show, I'm going to choose Amazon Cognito user pool, even though it's a little bit more complicated because I want to also show you a really easy way of adding authentication to your view app or really any app that uses AWS Amplify. So this will do both. It'll add that Cognito user pool and it'll also I'll add our GraphQL endpoint. So I'm going to use the Cognito user pool. The caveat being that the way you can set up uh, the interface inside AWS, it actually defaults having the, the API behind the Cognito. So you have to have be logged in to, to connect to it. But you can change that by going into the configuration, but we'll just leave the default there. So I'm going to do Cognito. And I'm going to do default configuration. You might see social provider. That's if you want like a Facebook login or a GitHub login or LinkedIn login. But we're just going to use the default configuration. It's pretty easy to add that later on if we needed. And we're going to say the, the, the main sign-on is going to be email address. And uh, do you want to configure advanced settings? We're going to say no. I'm done. So it's going to ask us, do you want to configure the advanced settings to the GraphQL API? No. Do you have an annotated GraphQL schema? No. Do you want a guided schema creation? So we're going to say yes here. And it's going to ask us, do we, so this is kind of like adding a bare bones GraphQL schema so we can play around with it. It's going to add a bunch of schema already. That way, if we just have no idea what we're doing, we can use this and it's just a great learning tool too. And you can see, you can use GraphQL relationships, like one to many relationships, but we're just gonna use a single object, like a to-do app almost. And then do you want to edit the schema now? I'll show you what it looks like. If you hit yes there, it actually opens up Visual Studio Code in another screen. And it gives you the ability to uh, change it. Kind of looks like this right here. Um, but I'm not going to enter anything in here. I'm just going to close it. I'm just going to hit enter. And it goes ahead and uh, creates it for you. So I'm going to try this. Uh, since it's ready now, now we have to do amplify push, which will build the backend resources, and then publish, which will actually publish it. So I'm going to push it. And uh, let's see what happens here. Actually, I'm not going to do publish because I don't want to publish my front end resources. I just want to do the back end. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And this will just take a moment. Do you want to generate code for your newly created GraphQL? I'm going to just hit enter there. And it's going to ask me what type. I'm just going to create JavaScript. And um, enter the file name pattern for GraphQL's mutation subscriptions. I'm going to leave the default. Do you want to generate update all possible GraphQL operations? Sure. Enter maximum statement date on two. That's fine. So it's going to take a moment. Okay, cool. It went ahead and added everything. This sometimes, by the way, takes could take like five, 10 minutes sometimes, but it went ahead and finished for us. You can see it even gives us an endpoint that we can hit and it tells you a little bit about what they did. Like I said, it's setting up IAM resources and it's basically adding the endpoint and doing everything to get it up and running. If you look inside the AWS YouTube folder that I created, you can see I have this Amplify and this is a lot of the configuration. And so usually you don't go in here and edit any of these files in this folder, but you're certainly there if you want to look at it. It also has our source folder, and now we have a new GraphQL folder, and it shows us all the different mutations. You can see it kind of added in this boilerplate test sample code for like a to-do app, like create to-do, update to-do. You can see the queries that it created, get to-do, get to do, list to-do. On this schema JSON file, usually you don't edit this directly. I think, I believe you edit these other files and then the subscription. And this is also all in the, on the, the schema language for GraphQL. So if you're not familiar with the GraphQL schema, schema language, don't worry about that right now. It's just something that they use 
Um, uh, maybe I'll do a future video about that. Let's go into the AW, before we do anything else, let's go into the AWS console and take a look at it. So if we look up AppSync, AWS AppSync, once you log into the console, you see that page. You see, I have two of them here. One of them is from the previous day. This is the latest one I did, this YouTube Eric one. And even gives you information about, like, this is how you can get up and running with it. Uh, you can define the schema, run a query. But if I click on schema here, you can see here is the actual schema that we have that it's set up. You can see it has the create to do, delete to do, model attributes. You can see here on the right hand side, we have our different resolvers. So this is kind of what, what you get out of the box. Uh, at, at, out of the box with the sample data, which is cool. So if you go into data sources, you could see the to-do table is actually hooked into an Amazon Dy DynamoDB, which is like a NoSQL ad table. If you click on the resource here, it'll actually open it up in this resource view, and you can look to see that there's no items in it. But let's come back here later and see if we add an item, what'll happen. So if you go here, this is how we do our queries. So we can add stuff, delete stuff. So let's see if we can add in a, um, let's see if we can do a mutation and add something into our, our schema, into our to-do table. So it returns it back. So to do that, we'll do a mutation and you can, I'll make this a little bigger. It's probably hard to see. Let's see here, mutation. And you can see, you can hit if you're in a Mac, I believe it's command space or control space on Windows. So you can see like, what do I have available? So I can do create, update, or delete. This is mutation. So I'm gonna create. And then in my create, uh, I'm going to have an input. And then in the input, I'm gonna put what I wanna actually send it. So it's gonna be an object. It's gonna have an ID, ID and a name. I guess this will be, um, I don't know, mow the lawn. We'll call it lawn, I don't know. And then we'll have a description and we'll call it mowing the lawn. And then what we can do is we'll have this, it's almost like you're using TypeScript at some point, but it's not. Uh, by the way, also when you're doing things like this, make sure you put double quotes, not single quotes. And now we can put in what we want it to return because when you use GraphQL, you always have a return value for the most part. So we want to return the ID, name, and description. So we can just highlight this and hit play. Okay, so it says this is an error we're gonna get, unauthorized exception, unable to parse JWT token. And that's because we chose that we were going to do a cognito um, our cognito was going to be our authentication, meaning that we need to have a valid user before we can actually run this query. Okay, so to do that, we can actually need to go in and create a login to it. So let's jump back into our view app and see if we can create uh, a login so we can do things like that. And first we need to do is do a little bit of a setup so we can actually uh, use this. So if we look in the official documentation, it tells us that to get this working, let's hide sidebar here. We need to go into the main uh, JS file. And I'm going to go ahead and just close this right here. And if you go into the official documentation and go into the docs for JavaScript and look at view, it says we need to add all this in here. Uh, before it'll work. So we just add that to the, to the main file. And what we're doing here is we're adding Amplify, the Amplify modules, Amplify plugin, and then it created this AWS config file, or excuse me, AWS exports file, and then we're getting the AWS config from there. So we'll just save that. And now we should be able to use some of our uh, AWS stuff inside this view app. So to do that, let's go back to home. And what I can do here is I'm gonna go back to my console, my terminal, and run npm run serve. Make sure it still works. And uh, there is something called an amplify event bus. 
And what this is doing is we can add this into one of our mounted hooks or one of our other hooks. I'm going to go ahead and close this again. And we can see if we're logged in or not. So the way we do this is we do amplify events, event bus dot dollar sign on. And then we can look at different events that happen. So we're going to look at auth state. And we have info and we have a function here. And we're going to just console log um, auth, and then we're going to pass the auth state, which we call auth state. And we save it. Uh, we're actually, we're going to call this info. Oops, info. Cool. So now every time we log in, it'll update that. So if we go to the console here, network, we don't, oops, console. We do get an error, so I'm going to do a refresh here. Cool, and we don't have anything in there. We didn't have anything do. It didn't do anything because we didn't change the auth state at all. But what we can do now is we have the ability to do authentication. So let's see, there is some built in, if you look at the view documentation, there's a handful of built in plugins and built in authentication components. So you can do an authentication component for sign in, confirm sign in, sign up, confirm sign up and forgot password. But if you do this auth amplify authenticator, it kind of just rolls it all into one. So let's see if that works. All right, so we're gonna go back to our app and here it is. Okay, cool. So we can edit this and configure it any way we want if we wanted to. Probably the easiest way if we really wanted to change the look and feel of this, the sign in account is instead of using the built in components, we actually go in and uh, use the authentication API. And it's pretty simple to use. If we go back to the official documentation and we go to docs, JavaScript, and then we go to authentication, you could see right here, there's all these auth dots. So if you add in this amplify auth from AWS Amplify, then you can do all sorts of things like auth.changePassword or auth.signin or auth.signup. And you just await any of these. These are all promises. And then you can do it that way. But for this demo and the sake of time, we're just going to use the built-in Amplify Authenticator. So let's see if we can create an account. Obviously, it's not going to do anything. Um, but we should see in the console if we signed in. So I'm going to create an account. It's going to ask me a username, which is an email address. So I'm going to just use Eric Hanchett blog at gmail.com password. And then I'm going to put in a password here. And it's asking me for my email again. And then we don't need a phone number. Well, actually, I think when I did the sign up, I may have put a phone number in, but I'm just going to leave it all fives. Five, 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 five. Cool. So I went ahead and created it. And now I'm going to go to my Gmail on my other page here and grab the verification code. Just sent it to my email. Control V. There it is. Confirm. All right. So this says we uh, auth sign in. So it looks like it signed into our account. Cool. So it confirmed our confirmed it. We should be all signed in. So if we put in I see uh, if we put in our pass our login Anchit blog at gmail.com and sign in. Cool, it says we're signed in. You see here it says auth signed in at the bottom. So we know it signed us in. Now we go to AWS App Sync. We have this mutation. We can do login with user pool. So we're going to, um, first we need to grab the client ID. So to do that, we have to go to services. Uh, I'm gonna open this up in a new tab just so I keep that same one open there. Go to Cognito. So another thing it did in the background is it created these user pools for us. So we can look at the one that it created for us. I believe it's this one, because it said Eric in there. And then we have to go to App Clients. Actually, I believe App Client Settings. And we grab this number here. It wants the client ID, which is this one right here. So I'm going to go back over here, log in. There's the client ID, username, which we, it's Eric Hanchett blog at gmail.com. 
and then I'm gonna put my password and if everything works, it should log in. Oops, that's actually in the wrong pool. So let me go back over here, log in. Cool, so now we're logged in. And now we should be able to uh, run this query again. So if I go back up here and I go back, it looks like I'll have to put the query back in. So we were doing a mutation. So I'm going to go right here, mutation. And we're going to do a create to do. And that create to do is going to have an input. And that input is a object that has an ID of one. And then a name of a Molon. Remember, it has to be double quotes, Molon. And then a description, which is mowing the lawn. And then we have to return something. So we'll turn an ID, name, and description. Now let's highlight this and see if it works. Cool, so went ahead and added it now. So we had to log in, but now we have this to do. So we have one mow lawn mowing the lawn. So I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna call it dishes. And I'm going to call it washing dishes right here. And play. Cool, so we created two. Now we can do queries on it because now we have two, two of them in our database. So we can do something like this. We do query. We can do get to do's or list to do's. I don't know, list to do's, items, ID, name, and description. I'm just hitting control tab each time to just quickly do it. And I'll hit play. Cool, now it lists all our to do's. So we know our GraphQL SQL is working, our database, as long as we're logged in and authenticated. And if we look at our items now, if we refresh it, now we have two to-dos in our, in our DynamoDB, which is what we expected. The Molon, dishes, everything, that's in there. Cool. So now let's go back here. Let's see if we can do this. Now we know, let's see if we can list those to-dos in here. Okay, so let's go back to our app here. I mean, we see every time we're signed in, we have a signed in right here. And by the way, we can add a sign out too. So if you go back to authentication view, there's a built-in sign out one too. Let's see here, it's called sign out. Yeah, it's this amplify sign out. So let's add that in here so we can see things signing in and out. That button will always be there because we that's the way we set it up. But now we're signed out. Now we can go sign back in if we wanted to. Okay, let's, let's just do this. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to say every time someone is signed in, and this changes to sign in, if info equal equal signed in, then we're just going to route to somewhere else. So we're going to do this dot router dot push, and then we need to actually create um, somewhere else. But we're going to just push it to the about route for now, because I'm being a little lazy and this video is getting a little long. So if it goes to sign in, it goes to about. And if we go back and we open the about view, there's nothing in there. But what we wanna do is actually list everything from the GraphQL endpoint. Okay, to do that, we're going to create a script. And then inside our script, we're going to um, add in a computed property. And in this one, we're gonna have it called list, list to do's query. And then in that query there, we're gonna return. We're gonna return something here. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna save it. And it's giving us an error because we're not returning anything. And I'll return nothing right now. But we're going to import in a um, some components. So we're gonna import components from AWS Amplify view. And we're gonna make sure those components are here. And this will just add every single component. But for the sake of this test, we're gonna do that. And now we also want to create this new list to do query. And what this is gonna do, it's just a, a query on our, on our, for our GraphQL. So we're gonna do a query list to do's 
And inside here, we'll have an ending. We're just going to add some of this GraphQL SQL, excuse me, this GraphQL query language, which is list to do's. And then that's going to be items. And we just want ID, name, and I guess description if we wanted to. And for right now, it's telling us that we're not using this anywhere, so that's bad. Uh, what we can do here in this list to do can queries, we'll do this dot amplify, which is a built-in since we installed the library. It's built-in. This dot amplify, and there's something called graph ql operation, and then we'll paste in list to do query. So now that we should be able to use this computed property, but to use this computed property, what we need to do is uh, use this amplify connect component, and then we give it this query, and we're going to list the list to do query, which, as you could see, that's the computed property. And now we should be able to do things like check to see if it's loading or if the data is there or do a bunch of things. So we'll have a template. And then inside the template, we'll have a slot scope. And then slot scope will have an object. And it'll have loading, data, and errors. Oops, I don't worry about this. I accidentally had it going in two places. We don't need it over here. Delete it up here. Then inside here, we can do uh, VF loading. So if it's loading, then we want to just put in loading, three dots. If it's, um, we can do another div and do another VF. If it's errors, um, then we can do something else like uh, errors. But if it's everything is fine, we do a v else if, and we just do the data here. And then we can just uh, look at the data. So we'll just do data. So if I did everything correctly, then it should work. So if we go to about now, we just see an empty array because obviously we have nothing in there. Uh, we have we do have things in there, but we can't access it because we're not logged in. But if we go home and log in, let's see if this works. So if we go Hanchet blog, it's my login, and I'll log in here. So it tried to it did navigate to slash about, but there's errors. Navigation duplicated. Nothing. Navigate to about is not allowed. Oh yeah, one other quick thing. Instead of having slash about, we just need to do about, and that should fix it. I'll make sure I put all this code on GitHub. Oops, I found my issue here. So if you go to air, VF errors here, I just put errors.length is greater than zero. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, cool, now we see our to-dos. We can see here our first to-do is the dishes, and the second to-do is the modal on if you do it by ID. So we have now talked to our API endpoint using GraphQL using authenticated routes that can only get to this if you're authenticated. So I think that's pretty good. So we have uh, been able to do a lot in this in this tutorial. I love to hear you, what you guys think about it. Uh, leave me a comment below. I really appreciate it. And if you guys really like this, I'll kind of deep dive in this and we'll go into a bigger tutorial. Thanks.